What's going on guys? Today I wanna to give you a quick overview on aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Aperture, shutter, and ISO. These are the big three when it comes to photography, and they can be a little bit tricky to understand at first. So hopefully I can help you understand the relationship, which will make things a lot simpler for you. Daniel Peter over at Photoblog Hamburg put together this cheat sheet on the big three, and it'll hopefully give you a visual as I discuss today. So let's break this down. We're gonna go through each one by one, and we're gonna go over the two main functions of each. Now each of the three controls exposure, but on top of that, each of the three also has an artistic control. So let's start with aperture. Aperture is the measure of how open or closed the iris of your lens is, and it's measured in a term called f-stop. The larger your f-stop number, the more closed down your iris is, which means it lets in less light, and thus the exposure is darker. The smaller your f-stop number, the larger the opening of your iris, meaning it's letting in more light, meaning you have a brighter exposure. Now there is an artistic use of aperture as well, and that's depth of field. When you have a low f-stop number, meaning you're letting in a lot of light and your exposure is brighter, you're gonna have a shallower depth of field. This is how you're gonna have nice cinematic look in your photos and in your videos. When you have a higher aperture or f-stop number, you're gonna have a much larger depth of field. This is great when you're shooting some sort of landscape or environment where you want everything in focus. Second, we've got shutter. Now the shutter is the measure of how long the shutter of your camera is open and thus allowing light to hit your camera sensor. So when we've got a fast shutter, one over 2,000th of a second, for example, it means that you're gonna be letting in less light. You're only letting in light for one 2,000th of a second, which means it's gonna be a darker exposure than a longer shutter speed because you're only letting in that brief amount of light. If we have a longer exposure, say 15 seconds, that means your shutter's open for 15 whole seconds and letting in light for that entire amount of time, which means it's gonna be a much brighter exposure. Now, that's the exposure level of shutter, but what's the artistic use? Well, the artistic use is motion blur. When you have a very fast shutter, you're essentially freezing time. You could be taking an action photo or some sort of sport photo with a high shutter, and it's freezing that action. You won't see any blur. It's as though everything is just stopping. However, if you have a long exposure, you're gonna to start to have blur in your shots because the shutter is open wide, and every motion that's happening for the entirety of that shutter being open is getting captured by the sensor. With long shutter speeds, this is how you're gonna get those night trail, or sorry, the light trail photographs, or you're gonna get photos of the stars. It's when you're doing these very long exposures that you can do these sort of tricks. But for these, you wanna make sure that your camera's on a tripod because any motion in the camera is gonna be picked up by the sensor. And finally, we have ISO. ISO measures the sensitivity or the post-image grain in your sensor. So what this means, when you have a high ISO, it means that your camera sensor is more sensitive to light. So it's gonna be a brighter exposure. However, it's also more sensitive to grain. So your image actually breaks down a little and gets somewhat grainy and noisy. Whereas if you have a low ISO, somewhere around 100, you're gonna have a lot less sensitivity, which means that your exposure is darker, but your image is a lot crisper and less grainy. This is something to think about when you're in a dark place and you've already adjusted your shutter and aperture and you need to play with your ISO. If you push the limits too high, then you're gonna run into some grain issues when you're looking back at your footage or your photos. Based on the artistic look that you're going for, you can combine any of these three. When you wanna get your exposure to the right level and you wanna adjust your depth of field, your motion blur, and make sure that your camera sensitivity is at the proper levels, these are the three that you need to use and you can sort of get a sense of how their relationship works hand in hand. We'll get into a more detailed description of how each of these work in future videos, but for now, I hope you have a better understanding of the big three and how they relate. Thanks for checking it out, guys. Go ahead and like and subscribe, and we'll check you back in the next one.